65-year-old Latina woman, and the thing that sold her on it was that I was a comedian. She was so, she was so pumped. She was like, oh, you are a comedian? Please tell me a yolk. <laughs> and when I say Latina woman, I don't mean like New York City, Bronx Latina. I mean like she's from Latina. You know, 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 anyway, so if you're a comedian, you hate having to tell a yoke. That's like the worst thing that I can ask you. And then what I always tell is that joke that I just told you guys. And when I'm telling it, her, she just looks so excited. Like I get to the Facebook part and she's it's just the joy. She's like, oh, Facebook, <laughs> this sounds like a yoke. <laughs> and, and then I say the LinkedIn part and the joy just drains from her face. Because this is a Latina grandmother who works at an airport store. She does not use LinkedIn. She doesn't know what that shit is. So now she's like really upset and I can start to tell these that she's upset because I'm trying on the shirts and any and if you know women who tried on men's shirts, lesbians, they're really <laughs> tight across the hips, this button. Yep. So I'm buttoning it. <laughs> who said who got who's coming? Okay, all right, cool. <laughs> Which, like kind of not really, but you could. Okay, all right. So, <laughs> but the button's a little snug, and uh, I go, oh, I think I'm gonna need a bigger one. And she's like, oh, you're gonna need a really big one. You're gonna need the biggest one. <laughs> all right, lady. <laughs> I get it. And then she comes. This is where I start to lose my shit. She comes back. She says. Does anyone uh, watch your shows? <laughs> Do you understand? She feels swindled. She no longer believes that I am a comedian. Do you get this? You, you don't like when that when someone totally... Because I'm not a healthy person, right? So now she's the most important person in my entire life. <laughs> you understand that transition? When like one minute you're buying a car, the next minute the dealer is your father. You know what I'm saying? Like someone who does not matter is so important to you. So I said to her, because I, I knew this was going to change her opinion. I said, listen, I'm going to be on the next season of America's Got Talent. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. But that's, that's what I said. It came out of my, you understand what I'm just, you know when a lie flies out of your face so fast, you're like, how the fuck did I do that? And that was amazing. Like, I don't know, I'm not, I don't consider myself a liar, but like, I just, you know what I mean? Like, we all lie, we all have those lies. Like, you know, you get a call from your mom, you know, she's like, oh, the coat you got me? Yeah, I, I lost it, I lost it. <laughs> Where at the airport? Lost it at the airport. Yeah, money's a little tight, but we I had a business trip. I was going on a business. Guam, actually. That's 
It's going to Guam. All right, that's shit. I thought that was so fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Do I have time to finish this? You have uh, 10 Dude. seconds. Yeah. Anyway, when I was returned, when I, she said, when you come back to return them, just, if I'm not here, just say that they were for your boyfriend. And I was like, okay, listen, lady, you can call me fat. You can shit on my career. But if you insinuate that I have a boyfriend, that's over line. I'm the boyfriend. Yeah. All right, yeah, Gavin. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Um, if you're watching for the first time, I am a comedian. Um, a 10 out of 10. That's a, that's an inflation. That's not true, but thank you. I appreciate the positive. I'd give that, I'd give that like a 7.5. I don't know, an 8. Um, I thought those lying tags are... What? Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah 8. No, no, not an 8 and a half. Um, I was working on some new tags for that joke. Uh... I haven't figured them out yet, but I uh, I know what I'm gonna do with it now, and I'm just gonna keep it short um, and move on to some new jokes and maybe come back to it later. But yeah, now I take questions and comments from you guys about what it's like to be a comedian and. Uh... <laughs> thank you, Vader's. You're hilarious. Good jokes. Thank you. Thanks, guys. I appreciate that. Uh, that's so funny. Uh, thanks. Well, I'm funny. Those are my jokes. I'm hilarious. But thank you for saying my jokes back at me. Um, yeah, any questions about what it's like to be a comedian? Those things are true. I, I, I appeared on television three months ago, my TV premiere, and on uh, Gotham Comedy Live. You can watch it online, season five, episode two. Uh, it's called Gotham Comedy Live. It's, it's a good show. Um, and I tour colleges, and that's pretty cool. So, yeah, questions about being a working comedian or whatever... Whatever you want to ask. Oh, I just burped. Thank you for the hearts. You guys are awesome. Where are you guys from? I love to make people laugh, but I have anxiety. Is there a way to get over that? Oh, my sure you're from Vegas. That's pretty cool. I've always wanted to perform there. Yeah, um, what kind of anxiety? Just stage fright or just being around other people? I think, honestly, the the only way you can get over anxiety, I think the fear is that you're not going to be funny, right? Like, you're going to embarrass yourself. Um, oh, that's sweet, my ugly shirt. That's funny. Oh, you were watching the other day, weren't you? But, yeah, but, like, um, I think the only way to get over anxiety about being on stage is to just do it a lot. Like, I can't even tell you how many times I've bombed. Like, I am not consistently funny on stage, when, especially when I'm trying new stuff. Like, those were new, all new jokes, right? So, like, when you tell a joke for the first time, it's, it's not going to be funny. Uh, yeah, I agree, my ugly shirt. I completely agree with you. You gotta... You gotta get on stage and just get the shit out of you. You gotta get the bad shit away. And the more you do it, the better and better you get. I know that's such a simple answer and it's not a fun answer, um, but it's the truth. You just need to get on stage as much as humanly possible. Um, think about it this way. Uh, that's not true at Woody Allen. Um, that's not true because the first time that someone does a joke, even Louis C.K. or Chris Rock, the odds are the joke is only going to be like, eh. But then you practice it and practice it and practice it. And I think there's a myth that professional comedians are just funny the first time they go on stage. It's not true at all. They work really hard to craft those jokes. If they were just funny every time they get on stage, there would be hour-long specials from comedians, like, just hundreds of them. But they don't. Louis C.K. only produces one hour-long special every year and a half. That means he works a year and a half to make an hour of his material perfect. That's only five minutes a month, you know, even less. Um, so, yeah. Charlie Dell, I don't think you listened to a word I just said. Yeah, even Jimi Hendrix sucked at guitar in the beginning. It's true. It's really, I mean, of course, talent is a part of it, but uh, it really mostly comes down to practice. Now Charlie Dell and Woody Allen are having an argument amongst themselves. That's kind of funny. Um, 
I wish there were another answer for the anxiety thing. I mean, yeah. Any other thoughts, questions? Besides myself, that's, I wish I were my favorite uh, comedian. My favorite comedian is Wanda Sykes. I love Wanda because, um, oh, thanks, Vaders, I appreciate that. I, I mean, open mics and find, you know what, here's a better piece of advice. Find supportive open mics. I think there's a myth with young comedians, Jesus, loud, with young comedians that hard open mics are the way to go. Find a nice open mic where they're very supportive and and encourage you to get up and you make friends there. That's going to make you much more comfortable. Anyway, back to Wanda Sykes. Wanda Sykes is my favorite comedian. She's an incredible writer and an incredible performer. She really straddles that line of just being a star at both of those things. Um, and I also love that she can talk about anything and make it funny. She can talk about being gay. She can talk about politics. She can talk about family. She does observational stuff. She tells autobiographical stories. She is just, in my opinion, a renaissance woman of comedy, whereas most comedians sort of stick to one thing for 80% of the time or like 60% of the time. I saw Wanda. Oh, that's awesome. I read the Terror Bank comedy. Am I on there? I'm not on there, but it's a great, you should read that. It's really, really good. Um, it's a great periodical. I know some people who write for it, um, and I would strongly recommend it. Um, yeah, I think there was one other question, but I forget what it was. This is a great room. You guys are awesome. A great periscope room. I don't know. Ashley for AGT. Actually, thank you. I just, uh, I just actually did. I was scouted for America's Got Talent, and I did audition. Uh, but I. Uh, Oh, shoot. I meant to write great room, guys, not writer room. I, I did get an audition for America's Got Talent. I was scouted by their, their casting their casting directors, and I auditioned, but I won't find out until uh, until January whether or not I'm going to be on the show. Maybe not until February. So just keep your fingers crossed that I'll be on it. Um, I really want to be on it. Uh, you can find out about all of my shows and even get on my mailing list where I give out free tickets, which is on in my bio, it's uh, ashleygavin.com. You can click on the link in my bio. If you sign up for my mailing list, you'll get one email a month saying what cities I'm in and what shows I'm doing, and you can potentially get free tickets that way. The other thing is if I'm not coming to your city, you look at my YouTube channel. It's got a, like probably an hour's worth of my polished, finished jokes. Um, that's awesome. All comedians, my ugly shirt. I feel weird calling you my ugly shirt. Because I don't have any fucking ugly shirts. Okay? My shirts are awesome. Who's my favorite unknown comic? I mean, it depends on what you think is unknown. Because some people would say Robert Kelly is an amazing comedian, one of my favorite comedians. His Netflix special is unbelievable, but he is not known to the public, but he is known to comedy fans, Robert Kelly. Um, Wendy Liebman, another person who all the comedians know, but a lot of people don't know, regular people don't know who she is. She's fucking unbelievable. Um, uh, I would say for legitimately unknown comedians, it has to be me. How can I not say me? Uh, Joe List just got his first uh, Comedy Central special. He's incredible. I would strongly recommend checking out Joe List. Tommy Jonigan, another guy that you've probably heard on the radio or you've seen him on Letterman, but isn't such a huge name. Tommy Jonigan. Um, trying to think. My friend Justin Smith is a great comedian. He's doing a tour across the South, six states. You've probably never heard of him. Justin Smith, really, really great comedian. Uh, I'm in. New, I'm based in New York. I'm in New York right now. Um, uh, I I mostly tour for for colleges. Yeah, Tommy is all over Sirius. He's all over Pandora. He's very very funny. He does the best joke about uh, helping his mom with the computer. 
What would the Terminator say if he was burned? I'll be back. That's good. That's good. You guys, these are such great questions and comments and, and commentary. You guys are comedy fans. It's cool. It's really, really cool. Give me a word to punt. I have not seen Big Gay uh, live. I'm sorry, Big Big Gay. That's just that's just me. I'm Big Gay. Uh, I haven't played the Stress Factory. Great venue though. Um, I haven't seen Big J live. Um, I've watched him a lot on YouTube. I've listened to his album, and I actually know his uh, girlfriend personally. Um, she's really really cool. But I've never met him. We're not super close or anything, and I, I don't feel comfortable asking. Do you buy your shirts from Latina women often? You know, I know this is going to sound strange, but I don't actually count every Latina person I meet. I don't have a running inventory. Um, I could start if that would creep people out, as I'm sure it certainly would. Um, <laughs> Oh man, gotta go. Have a bread at night. You have a bread at night too. Everyone, I hope everyone has a bread at night. Um, my friend Clownvis was on Elvis impersonating Clown. That is, that's insane. I'm in New York City right now. Who's giving me these hearts, man? I love the hearts. Snort up. It's nothing like a heart buzz. I have this weird lump in my knee. Uh, I shouldn't be telling you this. I should see a doctor is what I should do. All right, guys. It looks like the steam is running out and people are starting to leave. So here's what I'm going to do. Any final... I dare you to yell something random. Uh, I would, but people look like they're having a really nice time. I do. I have knee cancer. That's what it is. Knee cancer. There you go. Knee cancer. Yelled it for you. Um, any last-minute questions or comments? I, please, If you thought any of that was funny, please know that uh, all of this is new stuff that I'm working out. It's not fully polished. It's not completed. That's what these open mics are for. They're for testing shit out. So if you thought it was funny, it's going to get even funnier. And you can watch fully polished TV ready. And sometimes some of my videos are from television. Bits on my YouTube channel or my website, which are both in my bio. Uh, please subscribe. Please follow me. And you guys have just been a really nice group of people. And thank you for watching. And I appreciate your questions and your comments. You're so nice. I wish I could give you hearts back, but I can't. When I tap the screen, it just asks me if I want to end the broadcast. I will be telling so many more jokes. I'm going to do that same set again, but reworked in a couple hours uh, at around 10.30. So if you want to tune in and see the subtle changes uh, from the last performance to the next performance, then follow me and you'll get a notification that I'm going on stage. Yes. See, I have read that book, and it's an excellent book. Excellent book. Um, and so, just right on target, people don't know the importance of editing material and practicing and editing and practicing and editing and practicing. Sometimes it can take a year to get a joke right. Jerry Seinfeld had said it takes a hundred times telling a joke before you know it's funny. And he, there's a great article in the New York Times by Jerry Seinfeld about how he edits his material. Um, anyway, uh, yeah. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you for all the hearts again. Um, please follow and uh, hearts back at you. And bye.